Greetings everyone, in this video I'll present the lecture called Music on Earth, which is lecture 1 from Music Appreciation. When did humans begin making music? About 50,000 years ago, around the same time that we began to bury dead people, worship gods, and make sophisticated tools. Anthropologists call people that act this way behaviorally modern humans to be contrasted from anatomically modern humans, who were like us in every way, but did not sing songs, worship gods, bury dead people, or even wear clothes, which did not come online until about 72,000 years ago. Anthropologists suggest that this coincided with the emergence of art, particularly cave paintings and figurine sculptures. How do we know anything about ancient music. Well, there is evidence, and there are four basic kinds of evidence for human music making. There are uh, drawings and other graphic depictions of musicians and instruments. There are physical remains of instruments themselves. Literature and record books that cover music and musicians. And notated music, which is the rarest and most sought after form of evidence. What's the oldest piece of evidence for human music making? It's a 42,000 year old bone flute made from the wing of a vulture. It was found in a cave in southern Germany called Hohel Fells. And also in this cave is the very first known piece of representative art, the Venus of Hohel Fels, which is a woman shaped figurine found in Hohel Fell's cave, along with a 42,000-year-old bone flute. How did music get passed down through the ages? Music got passed down through the ages by oral tradition. Until the invention of accurate musical notation happened a thousand years ago, music was carried on solely as an oral tradition. An oral tradition is one in which customs, stories, art, and music are passed down through the generations via memory, and person-to-person -person contact. Due to the inaccurate nature of transmitting information in this way, oral traditions and their products change slowly over time. People often learn songs from their parents and grandparents, but teach different versions of those same songs to their own children and grandchildren. This is known as the folk process. After many generations, the songs of one's great-great-great-grandparents are not the same songs as one's great-great-great-grandchildren. Because of this phenomenon, we don't know exactly how the music of prehistory sounded. Vague notions only. What other evidence is there for prehistoric music making? Most of the evidence for prehistoric music making comes from the remains of musical instruments and from artistic renderings of musicians. Parietal art is found on the walls and ceilings of caves and often takes the form of animal paintings. These paintings are often in acoustically lively portions of the caves that are beset with echo, and researchers think that the people selected these locations because of these lively acoustic properties. And anyone who's ever experienced a naturally occurring acoustic chamber can understand why ancient people favored these sites. The sound produced inside these chambers is often beset by otherworldly amounts of echo resonance and reverberation. A single note sung inside a cave or at the bottom of a canyon becomes an all-encompassing wraparound cascade of sound. No doubt these acoustic properties within the caves would have proved useful to shamans and religious mystics trying to summon the appropriate feeling of awe from their congregants. Given the acoustic and artistic nature of these locations, it's likely that cave painting sites were the venues for humanity's first musical performances. What happened musically once people moved out of the caves? Well, music flourished. Uh, thousands of years after humans were performing ceremonial rituals inside painted caves, they formed agricultural societies in fertile regions around the globe. The first permanent settlements show up in the archaeological record about 15,000 years ago. And by 10,000 years ago, there were settled societies in Egypt, in central China, in the Indus River Valley, 
in Mesoamerica, the Andes mountain portion of South America, and of course in Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq, which is thought to be the oldest civilization on earth. The stability afforded by these cities allowed some of the inhabitants to focus on artistic endeavors like music. So what physical evidence for music making exists from ancient settlements? In ruins from ancient Mesopotamia, archaeologists found depictions of human music making and remains of musical instruments. One piece of evidence is the Standard of Ur, which is a decorated wooden box dug up in the 1950s from an ancient Sumerian cemetery dating from around 2600 BC. The Sumerians were one of the first cultures on Earth. They lived about 4,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. One of the figures depicted on the standard of Ur is a musician playing a lyre. A lyre is a harp-like instrument that was common during antiquity. It had several high-tension strings that were tuned to pitch and plucked with fingers or with a plectrum. So the standard of Ur was a box that has pictures of people at a banquet, and one of the people at the banquet is playing a lyre. Also found in the cemetery were actual musical instruments. One is the Queen's Lyre, which was found in the grave of Queen Puabai. And these artifacts are thought to be the world's oldest surviving string instruments. So this is actually what it was, like a fossil, basically in the dirt, and this on the left is a reconstruction of the lyre. Notice the bull. The bull had religious significance to the Sumerians, and evidence suggests that music was used for worship ceremonies by the ancient Sumerians. What role has music played in the societies of the world? Despite some subtle differences, music's role in society has been basically the same for all cultures throughout human history. All societies on Earth have employed music in similar ways. For religious purposes, uh, coupled with dancing and poetry for dramatic effect, to enhance worship ceremonies and rites of passage, and to accompany everyday activities like working. Are there musical differences between cultures? Some differences exist. In Sub-Saharan Africa, for instance, music is interwoven into everyday life to a much greater extent than it is in most other cultures. There are songs for pulling in the fishing nets, songs for puberty rites, songs for funerals, songs for warriors, songs for hoeing the fields, etc. For Sub-Saharan Africans, nearly every activity encountered in daily life has an accompanying song. Other differences among the world's music include interval sizes, distance between notes, scale systems, theories of note arrangement, and instrumentation, choice of musical device. The differences are noticeable but rarely profound. What is remarkable are the similarities. Singing, for example, is inherent to every culture. Are there any universal musical attributes among the world's cultures? Improvising is prevalent. Improvisation, which is the act of composing and performing without preparation, imbues most of the world's musical traditions, including those of India and Sub-Saharan Africa. In the West, improvisation is to be found in several forms of music, including blues and jazz, where it serves a critical component to the music's aesthetic. If improvising is prevalent, singing is universal. However, different cultures strive for different tone qualities. Some musical traditions call for timbres that include shouts, growls, whispers, and cries in their singing. Here in the West, smooth, melodious singing is what's desirable. What kind of instruments exist throughout the world? Are there many kinds? The world's musicians play similar instruments made from similar raw materials, but many varieties exist. Due to this abundance, musicologists have divided them into four categories. Chordophones which are instruments featuring high-tension strings for plucking or strumming. Aerophones, which are instruments featuring a length of tube or pipe through which a column of air is blown. Membranophones, which feature high-tension membranes held taut over a resonating receptacle. 
also known as drums, and ideophones, which feature resonating materials like wood or metal to be used as scrapers, bells, gongs, xylophones, etc. What do most of the world's musical traditions have in common? Scale theory exists in music of almost every culture. A scale is a collection of notes from which to derive melody. They function like a word bank for music. A scale provides a musician with this certainty. Just use these notes here and everything will sound good. Scale theory exists in the music of almost every culture. Here in the West, we are familiar with the major minor scale system, which uses tonal centers to form a collection of distinct but interacting keys. So, major scales and minor scales. We have a system that organizes those two varieties. Many cultures employ a system of pentatonic scales instead of the major minor system. So pentatonic scale has five notes, one, two, three, four, five, and an octave. Most of the world's cultures use the pentatonic scale. Not all use the major minor system. When did people begin trying to write music down? Humanity's first efforts to notate music came soon after the birth of writing. The birth of writing 5,000 years ago marked the beginning of music history. The first written evidence for music is pictograms featured on cuneiform tablets that display harp-shaped characters. The earliest composer whose name is known to us is Enhedwana. She was an Akkadian princess and priestess who lived around the year 2300 BC. Some of the lyrics to her moon god hymns exist, but no music. The earliest known music, a melody in notation, was found on a clay tablet dating from around 1450 to 1250 BC. Discovered in modern-day Syria, among the ruins of the ancient city of Ukarit, the tablet is part of a collection of similar cuneiform artifacts and contains writing in a Sumerian dialect known as Hurrian and a hymn to Nikal, who is the wife of a moon god. The music in the tablets are referred to as the Hurrian songs or as the Hurrian cult hymns. In the 1970s, a team of archaeologists and musicologists, led by Ann Kilner from the University of California, deciphered one of the tablet's melodies and published a short booklet and audio recording called Sounds from Silence. Kilner and her team discovered that the tablet contained important musical details like the intervals between the notes, the pitch set to be used for the melody, and stipulations for performance. The tablet suggests that the music is to be a single voice accompanied by a lyre. The problem with studying the Hurrian songs from a historical perspective is that not all historians agree with Kilner's interpretation. A History of Western Music, Burkholder, Grout, and Poliska, which is the standard university text for music history classes, gives short shrift to the Hurrian songs by mentioning that scholars have proposed possible transcriptions for the music, but the notation is too poorly understood to be read with confidence. On the other hand, musicologist Richard Taruskin seems to lend credence to Kilner's research when he describes in detail the Hurrian songs in the Oxford History of Western Music. In any case, the point is that none of the music from ancient times can be interpreted with full accuracy. Is there any notated music from societies that came along after Mesopotamia? Yes, there is some, but not much. Through an exceptionally long series of conquests, shifting kingdoms, dynastic successions, and assimilations, civilizations spread throughout the Mediterranean region. Some notable examples of these civilizations include the Egyptians, the Greeks, and the Romans. The most influential of these ancient people were the ancient Greeks. The Greeks left behind a significant musical heritage, including theoretical treatises, philosophies of music, and some actual pieces of music. Musicologists have several of note that are reasonably intact and reasonably decipherable. They are the Stasimon Chorus, which is part of the epic play called Orestes, written by Euripides in 408 BC. We have the Delphic Hymns, which consist of two hymns written in reverence to Apollo in 138 and 128 BC, so there's two of them. 
in the epitaph of Cyclos, which is a complete melody and set of words scrawled onto a tombstone dating from the first century AD. It's this epitaph of Cyclos that is most decipherable. Here's a summary of this lecture. The birth of music happened 50,000 years ago at the hands of behaviorally modern humans. Music is primarily an oral tradition, which means it's transmitted through the generations by word of mouth. Societies throughout human history have employed music the same way, for religious purposes, to enhance dancing, to accompany ceremonies, and to keep time at work. Prehistoric music can be studied through artifacts and the locations of parietal art. About 10,000 years ago, people learned how to grow a surplus of food, build permanent settlements, and form state-organized societies. Consequently, they developed art, music, and other forms of culture. The invention of writing, which emerged about 5,000 years ago, provided a reliable mechanism to record humanity's music-making activities. Musical evidence from ancient cities include artifacts like the Standard of Ur, which is a wooden box with pictures of people and musicians on it, and a clay tablet containing the Hurrian called Hymns, which is the oldest piece of arguably decipherable music on Earth. The oldest composer, whose name is known to us, is Enhedwana, a Sumerian high priestess from the city of Ur, who lived about 2300 BC. The first efforts to notate music emerged in ancient Mesopotamia, later in ancient Greece, and still later in ancient Rome. What is an oral tradition? Is it A, a set of behaviors that are passed down through the generations via genetics? Is it B, a type of ritual that features ring shouts and polyrhythmic drumming? C, a manner of transmitting customs through person-to-person -person contact? Or D, a type of mannerism learned by imitating animals? The answer is C, a manner of transmitting customs through person-to-person -person contact. Oral traditions include stories, art, and music that are passed down through the generations via memory and person-to-person -person contact. What do anthropologists call the phenomenon of slow alteration and change that occurs to the products of oral traditions? A, the folk process, B, the oral tradition paradox, C, the theory of behavioral shift, or D, the evolution of thoughts and actions? The answer is A, the folk process. The folk process describes the inaccurate transmission of oral traditions such as songs, stories, and poems. For example, people often learn songs from their parents and grandparents, but teach different versions of those same songs to their own children and grandchildren. What is the oldest piece of evidence proving the existence of human music making? Is it A. Cave paintings depicting people playing lyres B. A flute made from the wing of a vulture C. A treatise from ancient Greece depicting harmony and rhythm or D. Ancient Sumerian hymns It's B. A flute made from the wing of a vulture the oldest piece of archaeological evidence for human music making is a 42,000 year old bone flute made from the wing of a vulture. What evidence of human music making do researchers garner from the sites of parietal art? A. The sites were chosen to feature flute solos. B. The sites were chosen for their favorable visual properties. C. The sites were located inside echo chambers that enhanced ceremony and ritual. Or D. The sites were located near clans of the cave bear. The answer is C. The sites were located inside echo chambers that enhance ceremony and ritual. Parietal artwork, cave paintings, are in echo-laden portions of caves. Archaeologists are certain that these locations were used by prehistoric people for religious ceremonies, and that it is likely that ancient people selected these locations based on their lively acoustic properties. What piece of musical evidence exists from ancient Sumer? Is it A, the standard of Ur, B, the bells of Gondor, C, crown of the king of the Golden Hall, or D, paintings of Enhedwana? The answer is A, the standard of Ur. 
In modern-day Iraq, archaeologists found the Standard of Ur, which is a decorated wooden box dug up in the 1950s from an ancient Sumerian cemetery, dating from around 2600 BC. The Sumerians were one of the first cultures on Earth. They lived about 4,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. All cultures use music to enhance ritual and A. Guide fishing B. Hunt game C. Enhance life or D. Accompany dancing The answer is D. Accompanying dancing. All societies on Earth have employed music in similar ways. Music around the world has been used for religious purposes, coupled with dancing and poetry for dramatic effect, used to enhance worship ceremonies and rites of passage, and used to accompany everyday activities like working. What characteristics are common to the music of all cultures? What characteristics are common to the music of all cultures? A. The use of ideophones. B. The use of the voice. C. The employment of scales. Or D. The employment of syncopation. The answer is B. The use of the voice. Singing is found in all cultures and societies. Different cultures strive for different tone qualities. Some musical traditions call for timbres that include shouts, growls, whispers, and cries. Here in the West, smooth, melodious singing is preferred. What is the oldest piece of truly decipherable music? A. Hurry and called hymns. B. Epitaph Asikolos. C. Delphic hymns to Apollo. Or D. Euripides. The answer is B. Epitaph Asikolos. The most complete and well-understood piece of this lot is this epitaph. Found in present-day Turkey, it exists in a form of ancient Greek notation that features symbols above the text. Musicologists are confident that they know how it is supposed to sound. The epitaph of is a complete melody and set of words scrawled onto a tombstone dating from the first century A.D. It's 2,000 years old, almost. Thanks. Did you keep track of your score? If you got less than 90% of the questions right, then study the material and take the quiz again. Make note cards of all the important concepts, facts, and times. Then drill yourself on the material until you know it by heart. Thank you.